Jadual harian Hana selalu sibuk. Hah? Huh? Jadi, saya kekal sihat dengan Vida C. Dengan vitamin C yang cukup setiap hari. Tiada apa pun yang boleh menghalangi saya. Minumlah Vida C. Perlindungan sistem imun anda. Good evening and welcome to Kini News. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak has pointed out some discrepancies over the reasons given by the Perikatan National Government yesterday to postpone the Parliament sitting. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak has taken a swipe at the Perikatan National Government over their decision to postpone Parliament until the end of the emergency. Najib pointed out that while the PN government had said that Parliament cannot reconvene during the emergency as a substantial number of MPs fall under the high-risk group for COVID-19, the same MPs could be seen sitting closely in a hall for the Prime Minister's Satahun Malaysia Prihatin address. He also cited Takiuddin's remarks that science and data were among the reasons that Parliament could not reconvene, saying that Malaysians were amazed at the reasons being given by the PN government in response to the Yang Dipertuan Agong's decree. Yesterday, Takiuddin Yudin said that Parliament was not suspended but its sitting had merely been postponed on legal grounds to enable the government to combat the COVID-19 pandemic more effectively. He said the decision was taken based on scientific facts and data gathered in relation to the pandemic. Takiuddin had added that the government did not want to expose MPs to unnecessary risks as many of them fall in the high-risk group for COVID-19. In explaining this, he pointed out that 77 out of all MPs in Parliament are between the ages of 61 and 69, while 19 are between the ages of 70 and 79. He added that 4 MPs are aged 80 and above. AMNO Youth has shared their opinion over the decision to postpone Parliament until after the emergency, with their chief dismissing the de facto law minister Takiuddin Hassan's reasoning that members of Parliament are exposed to a high risk. AMNO Youth Chief Ashraf Wajdi Duski said the government should respect the Yang Libertuan Agong's advice that Parliament can be convened during the emergency session. He called on them to reconsider their decision to postpone Parliament until August. He said this in response to de facto Law Minister Takiuddin Hassan, who had said that the sitting of Parliament was being delayed until after the emergency ends on August 1st so that the government could focus on the COVID-19 pandemic. Takiyudin had also argued that 100 MPs were in the high-risk COVID-19 group. In a statement last night, Ashraf said that the government should not be seen as being afraid and try to castrate a democracy by denying the people's voices and mandate to their MPs in Parliament. He said, MPs should be allowed to debate, pass bills and bring the people's issues to Parliament. He also dismissed Takiyudin's reasoning that MPs would be exposed to risk saying that lawmakers would be vaccinated under phase one of the vaccination program. He added that postponing the parliament session does not make sense, as Pasal Malam's shopping malls, restaurants and schools have been allowed to reopen under the emergency. Yesterday, Pakatan Harapan had also lashed out at Takiuddin over his reasoning. In a statement, the Harapan Secretariat said facts showed that not a single MP contracted COVID-19 when the Dewan Rakyat convened for 55 days last year. They said, that there was no COVID-19 cluster due to Parliament, and the facts showed that the preventive measures taken in Parliament last year worked. The Harpan Secretariat said the reason given by Takiuddin was weak and disrespectful of the Agong. AMNO Secretary-General Ahmad Maslan has revealed details on the letter that was sent to Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin, which said that AMNO will not cooperate with Bersatu once the 15th general election kicks off. AMNO Secretary General Ahmad Maslan said that the AMNO Supreme Council's decision to sever ties with Bersatu in the 15th general election was already made on the 19th of February. According to Ahmad, the decision was made after Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin asked AMNO to make a clear stand on cooperation with Bersatu before seat negotiations can take place. In a statement today, he said Muhyiddin had asked this during a meeting between Bersatu, PAS and AMNO on the 15th of February. He said five leaders from each party were present at that meeting. Ahmad said that the party had also decided that it would not be opposed to staying in the Perikatan National Government until Parliament is dissolved. 
He added that the decision was made after taking into consideration grassroots sentiments and weighing the pros and cons of staying in the government amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. His statement came after former AMNO and Barisan National Secretary General Anwar Musa urged the AMNO leadership to explain whether it is true that the party will not cooperate with Bersatu in the next general elections. Bersatu is set to decide on the party's response to AMNO's stance at a meeting today. Muda has still not received a response from the Home Minister on their registration appeal and has called on the Minister to make a decision soon or they will be forced to bring the matter to court again. The Malaysian United Democratic Alliance or MUDA has called on the Home Minister to respond to their appeal to be registered as a political party. A month has passed since MUDA had submitted its appeal to the Minister. This was following its unsuccessful legal challenge against the Registrar of Society's refusal to register the group. The ROS had rejected MUDA's application for registration as a political party, as well as a similar application by Pejuang on the 6th of January. Muda co-founder Lim Wei Jiet told Malaysia Kini today that there is an urgent need for the minister to respond to the group's appeal due to signs of an impending general election. He said that there have been several reminders since February 4th, but there has been no response. Lim also urged the Home Minister to make a decision as soon as possible on the appeal. He added that they would have no choice but to bring the matter to court again if there are more delays. Are you thinking about when you'll get your vaccine? Well, Health Minister Dr. Arham Baba has addressed the issue of queue jumping for the COVID-19 vaccine and highlighted the penalty that will be upon the offenders. Health Minister Dr. Arham Baba said that individuals who jump the queue to receive the COVID-19 vaccine can be fined up to 50,000 ringgit, be jailed for six months or both. He said this was provided under Section 31, which is a new provision under the Emergency Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Amendment Ordinance 2021. According to Adham, regulations under this new subsection allows for the imposition of penalties under the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988 or Act 342 for any offence not specified in it. Adham added that for now, the ministry has not received any report regarding queue jumping for the COVID-19 vaccination. On Monday, Kairi Jamaluddin, the coordinating minister for the immunization program, said that the government has come up with a guideline for vaccinators to identify categories of frontliners who are eligible for vaccination in the ongoing test phase. He said it was drafted to address the issue of queue jumping among eligible recipients. The driver of a trailer that was involved in the bridge collapse yesterday on the Middle Ring Road 2 has tested positive for drugs and is now in police custody. The driver of a trailer that crashed into metal scaffolding at the Siuk Highway construction site has tested positive for drugs. The driver had been taken to the Sungai Besi police station to lodge a police report and to facilitate investigations yesterday. In a statement today, Kuala Lumpur Police Traffic Enforcement and Investigation Chief Zulkifli Yahya said that a preliminary urine test returned positive for methamphetamine. He added that the driver is being remanded under the Dangerous Drugs Act. Two people had died and three were severely injured in the incident yesterday. The five all Malaysians had been travelling in a van on the way to work in a factory. According to Zulkifli, the top part of the trailer had crashed into the metal scaffolding at the site where a pedestrian bridge was being constructed. This had caused a steel beam and the metal scaffolding to fall on both lanes of the MRR2 highway and onto the van. The incident occurred amidst rain and traffic around 6.15pm. The two women who died were aged 47 and 42. Zukifli said that the van driver, a 47-year-old man, suffered a broken left collarbone, swollen lungs and internal bleeding. Two other female passengers also survived with injuries. A 54-year-old woman suffered an injury on her left leg while a 51-year-old woman has an injured left calf. All three are being treated at the UKM Medical Centre. To be honest, my daily routine is really, really occupied because every day, mostly every day, I have classes and my class can take up to three hours per day. I'm currently doing my internship, working from home basically. Usually, I have a lot of readings and writings to do. The issue that I always face is either losing track of time or getting distracted by other things. I'm a student and all my classes are online. So in the context of being online is that so many things can easily distract you, especially you can just open a different tab and watch something else instead of focusing in the class. I 
I used to take certain supplements like omega-3 and fish oil but I stopped taking them so I just rely on a diet and good amount of exercise. I just do um, a regular basis activity for example take my normal meal and also uh, do some activities like for example uh, workout and exercise. I'm not actually taking any vitamin supplements for now because I actually depend a lot on my balanced diet. Um, on what I eat. I've got it once for myself to try and I like it because it isn't overly sweet and Maybe a good way for you to wake up. Since the product, as you mentioned, that is easily to get at any convenience store, so I guess I should buy it and try it. I have actually tried the Vida C Vitamin C Sparkling Orange Drink, and I think the sparkling essence in that drink actually gives you a very refreshing feel. And I think it's actually a good immunity boosting drink. Dengan 1000 mg vitamin C, ia memberikan keyakinan pada saya kerana sistem imunisasi saya sentiasa berada dalam keadaan terbaik. Vida C menjadi pilihan utama Hana setiap hari. That's a wrap for Kini News this evening. For more stories, go to kinitv.com. Don't forget, we also post the latest headlines on social media. So follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook to get the latest news updates. If you like what we do, support us by clicking the bell icon so you never miss another headline again. If you're heading out, don't forget your mask. And when you can, do stay home. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay safe, Malaysia.